Welcome back to Showreel. Disney's latest fantasy adventure, Oz the Great and Powerful, sees director Sam Raimi imagining the origins of L. Frank Baum's beloved wizard character. With an all-star lineup including James Franco, Mila Kunis, Oz tells the story of Oz Oscar Diggs, a small-time circus magician and con artist with, a dubious, with dubious ethics. When Oscar's hurled away from dusty Kansas to the vibrant land of Oz, he thinks he's hit the jackpot. That is, until he meets three witches, Theodora, Evanora and Glinda, who aren't convinced he's the great wizard that everyone's been expecting. Reluctantly drawn into the epic problems facing the land of Oz, Oscar must find out who is good and who is evil before it's too late. You're in Oz. It's like no place I've ever seen. Great wizard from Kansas. Come and set things right. You're the only one strong enough to destroy the Wicked Witch. Are you the great man we've been waiting for? I think I could be. Witty PG. So coming out in March, actually we're already out in cinemas, it's just broken the first week of the box office. This is obviously the prequel to The Wizard of Oz, so I guess many people who go and see this movie won't be familiar with The Wizard of Oz if they're a lot younger. Um, the Wizard of Oz, of course, the 1939 making of the film. What did we think, girls? Uh, it was average, I don't know. Um, I watched the original last night and it's just, it's on another level. It's yeah, I don't know. Had you seen The Wizard of Oz? Yeah, yeah. I saw it last last Thursday and you know, when it came out and I just I just had such high expectations for yeah. it and it just fell so far short of what I thought it would it's be. It's definitely a change from yeah. the older versions, especially since Warner Brothers now owns the right to a lot of iconic elements right. that were in The Wizard of Oz. So you won't see the ruby slippers, you won't see uh, like a different shade of green on the witch. Right. Yeah. You won't see the yellow brick the road. Warts missing, yeah. yellow brick road, right. That's so it's not something I'd usually go and see, but uh, Franco was enough to make me go and watch it. Uh, Look, I'm going to call it how it is. It's a movie for six-year-olds, or people who behave like six-year-olds, or people who can imagine like six-year-olds. Or people who love James Franco. <laughs> or six-year-olds. <laughs> or six-year-olds. So, <laughs> that's exactly right. I Look, to be honest, it was a big budget film. I think the production budget was $200, 200 million. million yeah. Big budget film. And I was a little concerned. There were a couple of things in the movie for me that just didn't flow right. Half of the time we were on a really great set, and then other parts of the time we were in Toontown, we were in a Looney Tunes, it was very animated. Mm -hmm. And it seemed to me to be really inconsistent. Did you notice that? The CGI was a little bit out on some, you know, the, the, right. all of a sudden they're walking down the yellow brick road and there's this big scene, you're like, hold on a minute, you're looking to either side and it just didn't quite line up. So yeah, that was definitely one of the things, yeah, kind of stood out. I think that's almost something that was intentional though. It was supposed to cut away to something more fantasy land. That's how it's always usually been. Yeah. So I guess it was kind of holding back to the old style stuff. Yeah. I, I really did enjoy the fact that it was in black and white, kind of that noir style to start right. with, and um, Zach Braff being in there, and then cutting it to the, to the extreme color. I mean, obviously back in 1939, that would have been you know the same type of thing, but. Yeah, it, I just the fact that it didn't go back to the black and white at the end, it was supposed to, The Wizard of Oz being a dream land and for that to stay there and not go back um, and incorporate all of those characters, because obviously in the 1939 Julie Garland version, she has all of these characters and she has a dream and they're all in the dream and then she goes back. It seems like the Michelle Williams character came through as Glinda, as you know, and that kind of travelled on. I didn't really understand what was going on with that. Well, let's either. have a talk about some of the casting because the yeah. main character we know is James Franco. It was mm -hmm. turned down by Robert Downey Jr. Yeah. It was turned down by Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp as well, yeah. who personally I think would have been excellent. Anytime you take Edward Scissorhands and make him into a <laughs> wizard, it's it's going to work. It's true. Well, Johnny what Depp was originally it? interested in the part, but he had uh, filming conflicts. Yeah, mm. it's, it's but it would have been good to have him in it. Yeah, I agree. That's when you get paid so much money, you've got so many options, <laughs> doesn't all it? All of the female leads were, were so strong in this. Um, Rachel Weisz, who is in The Mummy, and I love her in everything. I thought that she was just amazing in this movie. Um, obviously, we can't ruin the ending for her, anyone, but her transformation at the end was scary. I'm like, I wouldn't take my six-year-old to see that. <laughs> that was in your face. And I was, yeah, I don't know, it was... It, it was very, it was very Sam Raimi, I thought, because I mean, he, he's come yes. from the, the Evil Dead, and you know, I thought it was odd when he went into Spider-Man, and then into this, the transition, it seems to flow, but you know, he's gone back to making Evil Dead. I think he just wanted to see some horror in there. So it was kind of like, oh, 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. Good. Now, also the musical score that's that's received a lot of notice. Yeah, um, done by Danny Elfman, who yeah. you may know from the Simpsons theme. Also, uh, with a little Housewives. bit of Mariah Carey thrown in as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do we think of that? I don't know. Like I said, I watched the original last night, and every song in that is iconic. And this just didn't seem to have any of those you know, really catchy standout tracks. Standout tracks that get stuck in your head, like, you know, ding dong, the witch is dead or you know, the wonderful wizard mm -hmm. of Oz, you know, all of those types I mean, excuse my singing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, those even people who don't know the movie or have never seen the original know those songs. So, you know, I just didn't think that it was really But then it is kind of taking away from the old version since they yeah. don't have those iconic elements, I guess it right. is kind of paving their own yeah. version of it. It was almost an entirely different story. Look, one of the things they've been able to do with this new, with, with the new film, the prequel, that they wouldn't have been able to do back in 1939 was the use of 3D. We've seen a lot of 3D lately. We've yeah. seen 3D in Life of Pi. We've seen it in yeah. Hugo. I personally saw, didn't see the 3D version, but I heard the 3D version of this film was really good. Yeah, I saw it in 3D. Um, I think it's just getting kind of done to death. But yeah, I was really impressed with the, the 3D. And I mean, I guess that's why it was so scary at the end with things kind of right. jumping out. That's probably it now that I put my finger on it. But yeah, no, I you know, I guess with so much CGI, it's just all incorporated into the film as a base element these days. So, you know, it's... Yeah, now yeah. the promotion of the film was really interesting because the, to promote the film they ended up using a hot air balloon that travelled across, across the America, US of A, yeah. oh, wow. which is, if you haven't seen the film, there's that key moment at the beginning with a hot air balloon mm -hmm. and this hot air balloon travelled across the US to, uh, to, for the distribution and the promotion of it. They were expecting 80 million in the box office on the first weekend. They reached their 80 million. How long do you think we'll see this film around for? Do you think it will be as iconic as the original? I don't think so. Um, an interesting thing I was, I was googling before: um, the eighty million dollars that they made on, you know, box office for this, it cost two hundred million dollars to make. Um, back in nineteen thirty-nine, the film grossed seventeen million dollars, and in translation, I mean, that was during the depression. So seventeen million dollars is actually two hundred and seventy-five million dollars nowadays. So, you know. You want to try and put them on scale in, in, in a, an iconic movie as opposed to what's come out now. Is well, it has killed at the epic. box office and mm. because of that, a sequel has been confirmed. What That's are your thoughts so. on that, given that we won't have the iconic elements that you did in the 1939 version? My first thought is it needs to be shorter. This was the yeah. longest movie that I have yes. seen in a really long time. It was 155 minutes, yeah. really long, particularly if it's aimed at a kid's movie. The sequel, look, I think it's going to depend on casting. I think it will depend on um, whether or not they do it in 3D. Mm -hmm. I, there's potential there for it. Will it ever be as great as the original? I, 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 don't, don't I don't think there is much of a gap between the end of this one and the start of The Wizard of mm -hmm. Oz. Really, you've got the start of The Wizard of Oz where the Wicked Witch of the West has a house dropped on her. Mm -hmm. And, oh, sorry, the Wicked Witch of the East, sorry. And then, you know, Wicked Witch of the West is flying around. It's like, what really can happen in that time after this one? You have to see it. <laughs> well, a lot but I just don't think that there is, you know, much. Obviously, she's, you know, Wicked Witch of the rest West has gotten a lot more evil in that space of time. But what could possibly have happened to make well, her more evil? Well, who knows? We'll have to. We'll have to see how it goes. Now, before we wrap it up, let's have a look and see. Out of five, what do we give it, ladies? I'm giving it a three out of five. Oh, three out of five, Bridget Amanda. I give it a three. I give it a two. It was the longest movie ever. Yeah. So we'll have to wait and see. So on average, it's a three out of five for mm -hmm. us.